Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Former Governor Robert List of Nevada joins us for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always delighted to welcome back to the program former Governor Robert List of Nevada. It's a pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Well, thank you, Sam. It's great to, great to see you again. Um, so we're taping this on the morning of January 25th, so people have a time frame here. So just Let's start out with, give me your thoughts on the events of the last couple of weeks, starting with uh, what happened in the Capitol on January 6th. Well, I think, number one, it's take, it took place in a period where uh, I think the Democrats are celebrating, of course, uh, getting ready for their, for their inauguration. And the Republicans are sort of still in mourning from the, uh, from the election and uh, feeling apprehensive about the change. And so it came at a, at a high point with emotions on both sides. Um, and of course, uh, I, I, we now know that, the, that the, uh, the majority in the House, Democrats, and the, and the, the, the tide and in effect control of the Democrats in the Senate has led to, a, uh, a, a, to an impeachment and a, tri a trial now coming up. Uh, so uh, I think there isn't anything good that can be said about any of it. It's all uh, bad for America, bad for both parties. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very anxious and difficult time. I don't, I don't know anybody that's celebrating it. Um, well, I think the Democrats are celebrating the fact that they're in power, uh, but, but trying to figure out at this point um, how to make that power work. Um, one of the things that's, um, you know, under discussion right now um, is the filibuster. And it seems like a dual-edged sword because Senator Reid got rid of the filibuster for judges and then the Republicans got rid of it for Supreme Court justices and managed to get a ton of justices passed through, um, including a, a lot of judges. Um, at this point, the discussion is whether um, the filibuster will go away or stay. McConnell wants a two-year reprieve before anything is done. What do you think is going to happen, and, and, and what do you think about the filibuster itself? I think the filibuster is a very important uh, uh, me uh, device or measure that uh, maintains uh, the necessity of, of inter-party cooperation. Uh, the uh, over the years, it's 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 worked well to require them to come together. Nobody, no party in control ever gets what they want, 
unless they have, uh, you know, a, a 60%. And so I think it's been a good thing. And if it, if it goes away, um, it's K bar the door. It'll be back and forth between the two parties undoing each other's uh, policies. And I mean, we, the Republicans dealt with it the last four years. And the bottom line is that we had a balanced uh, outcome, I think. And so I think it would be a terrible uh, outcome if, if, it's, if it's done away with. Uh, Senator Reid, even before the election, said uh, give the Republicans three weeks, and if they don't come through, um, then dump the filibuster. Well, it's always a threat. You know, uh, uh, Senator Reid uh, uh, used it uh, w when they were in charge to, to leverage things. And, of course, they did away with the filibuster on certain confirmations. And and uh, where for the Supreme Court, for example. And uh, he's the one who, who really initiated the concept of, of eliminating the filibuster or using it as a leverage to the threat of getting rid of it. But on balance, I think it's important to maintain it. Um, were you surprised at the strength of the Republican turnout um, in the election? Because even though they didn't win the presidency, um, there were a lot of victories across the country for Republicans that uh, some people had written off. Yeah, I think I, I was not surprised. No, I, because I believe that, that a majority of Americans, Republicans and a lot of independents and a lot of Democrats, believed in the policies that, uh, that President Trump put in place. Well, they may not have liked, many of them didn't vote for him or didn't like him uh, for whatever reason, mainly style, I guess. Uh, nevertheless, his policies are very popular, and I think still are, and I believe that Biden's uh, going against them is going to hurt him. So I, um, I think it, it came down, it, it, the wave came down the ballot on the Republican side, the, the, the wave of, of favoritism toward, uh, toward the conservative policies, both nationally and internationally. Do you think that um, the majority of the country is in the middle as it has been in the past? Because it seems to me that you've got a battle in both parties between the center and the extremes. I think the majority is in the middle. Um, I think that uh, the, the, the split on the Republican side is, is not so much on policy. Uh, I think there's a, there's a, a good consensus on, on what uh, has happened in terms of international relations, in terms of domestic policy and bringing jobs back and all those things. I don't see any real div divisiveness over that. I do think there's a major split on the Democrat side uh, over uh, how far left to move. And there are still the traditional old line Democrats who, uh, who don't like it. And, that, and they're the ones who crossed over. Because we are the, you know, compared to the Democrats, we're in a, we have far fewer voters and they, yet they came over to our side on a lot of state and local elections and on the president's election itself. You know, over the, the past several decades now, um, we've seen groups align themselves with the Republican Party that weren't really Republicans. They were libertarians, uh, they were independents, uh, they were folks that realized they could not get elected um, under their own banners, and so they join the Republican Party. Um, how do you feel about them um, and their effect on the Republican Party? And you can go back and talk about, you know, Tea Party Republicans and others, um, the Freedom Caucus. Um, do, is that a benefit to the Republican Party going forward, or is that a detriment after we've seen out over the last four years? I think it's a benefit. I mean, you take all your votes. Uh, you don't have to. There's an old saying that, you know. The question is, do the voters like you, not do you like the voters? You take what comes your way and add them in your column. And uh, uh, both sides have extremists that, that are going to vote for them. But nobody really, in the end, all the votes are secret. And it's the numbers that, that count when it comes to uh, winning and losing. Um, in, in your days as governor and after you were governor, um, the, the conservative side of the party uh, reared its head quite strongly on, uh, uh, in Nevada, I should say, uh, with what happened up in Jarbage, um, 
bombings at the BLM, um, and I'm not saying that that's a conservative issue, but it was, you know, certainly a, a, a right-wing extremist uh, group um, that, that partook in that. Um, does it concern you that we've seen a rise of this? And I go back to what happened at the Capitol. Um, and yes, there were a lot of people that were upset about the election, um, but a lot of people stormed the Capitol. And, and I'm not sure that uh, a majority of the Conservative Party is happy about the fact that they did so under a right-wing banner. I think that I think this, and it's, it's easy to compare, but the fact is uh, uh, there were extremists, I guess you call them extremists, but they were not violent. They didn't have guns. Uh, I mean, they weren't violent in that sense. They weren't there to kill people. Uh, they were storming their own capital. Um, and unfortunately, in the process and in the melee, uh, some people were hurt and, and I guess uh, three or four people actually died, uh, which is terrible. Um, and there's been a, a lot made of it, particularly because it's our capital and it wasn't supposed to happen. But it, none, I don't hear any of that outrage over what happened last summer all across the country, burning down businesses, burning down buildings, burning down uh, and taking over courthouses and police stations. Nobody objected to that. And uh, so there, there have been extremists on both sides uh, expressing themselves. The difference with this one is that uh, the Democrats are now in control and they're going to make a lot out of it. And uh, it's, these, are, these are difficult, contentious times. I, I, uh, nobody can approve what, what occurred. But I also think as a the reaction is is entirely partisan. Um, true that it's partisan, but is there really an equivalence? Does one um, look at an incident in one place and an incident in the other, and say, "Well, they did this, therefore, what we did was okay"? And you know, I'm I'm just kind of curious because you know, you're a parent, I'm a parent. If our kids came home with that excuse, I I don't think that we would be accepting of it. No, we 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 say that the you know that it doesn't uh, doesn't justify it on either side nobody can approve of either of either what went on over that long period of time and what happened on that one occasion i i think that it's it's bizarre that nothing was done about it and still isn't being done about it in portland and chicago and and uh, seattle and san francisco and sacramento and denver where uh the the extremist lefts People are still doing it, and nothing's being said about it uh, by the party, by the Democrat Party. It's just wrong on both sides. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back with former Governor List right after this timeout. Get in on the action at the Tamarack Casino and win your share of $100,000 guaranteed. Now through February 27th, plus five times points every Friday. $100,000 guaranteed at Tamarack Casino. Your good times are at Tamarack. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low, and our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't gonna let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. 
The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. Get in on the action at the Tamarack Casino and win your share of $100,000 guaranteed. Now through February 27th, plus five times points every Friday. $100,000 guaranteed at Tamarack Casino. Your good times are at Tamarack. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with former Governor Robert List of Nevada. Um, We've got a governor's race coming up. Uh, it's two years away, but already uh, the present governor, Sislak, has raised uh, well over $2 million for the campaign. Um, I remember when Kenny Gwynn uh, had $3 million in the bank for his first time around to scare off opposition. Um, who do you see on the Republican side as contenders for the, uh, the gubernatorial race? Well, it, it, nobody has really stepped out and said, I'm gonna run course, um, and we are uh, really only two years away from the next, or a year away from the next campaign. Uh, it's, it's coming on pretty fast. I guess the names that one would have to consider is uh, having statewide appeal uh, would be Adam Laxalt, uh, uh, Mark Amaday, uh, both of them, and uh, there'll be others. I mean, we have, we have uh, folks in the legislature. Uh, and we have folks in local government um, who, who could step up. So, and I think that, that Governor Sisolak will, will uh, have to deal with the fact that a lot of people are unhappy about the way the coronavirus thing has been handled. And uh, he's, he's done what he's done and that he'll be accountable for that. So it's, it could be a wide open race. Um, okay, so let's deal with the last thing first. Um, Governor Sisolak's handling of uh, the coronavirus. Um, what would you say are the good things he's done and what would you say are the things that you're concerned about? Well, I think he's, 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 worked, uh, uh, he's worked to bring about uh, vaccinations across the state. Um, they've gotten the vaccine down to the local people. Um, I think uh, he's done his best at that. I think that the problems now have to do with the accessibility of the public to get the vaccinations. And so how much of that you can put on him, I don't know how much on the locals, I don't know. I know in my case, I'm, I'm 84 years old and I haven't been able to get a shot yet. Uh, but uh, there, are, and there are lots of people in my category, uh, people are having to deal with the computers when they're not familiar with it, particularly some of the older people. Um, but I think the, uh, on, on balance, the, the, the trouble that, he, that he's had have, has been in the prioritization uh, of who goes first. And of course, the people that go last are the ones that are going to complain. So you just, you're not going to please everybody. But so, so in the process, uh, he, you know, he's going to make some enemies. And, and I think he knows that. And that goes with the turf when you're governor. And, uh, it, and of course, there's some time to to uh, let that all shake out and go by. And some people will not even remember it uh, when they go to vote in a year and a half. Um, do you, well, boy, uh, I, I would be so thrilled if what you just said is true, that a year and a half from now, we weren't worrying about the effects of coronavirus and, and the fallout. Um, do you think that the state of the state that he presented last week um, was basically a, a welcome unions uh, to vote for me a second time around and solidify that base? I, I think that's pretty much what it was. That's, uh, I, I don't think the average person knows, knows what was said. I don't think the average voter, the average Nevada and either party is paying much attention to, uh, uh, to, to speeches right now. They're worried about their jobs. They're worried about their family. They're worried about paying rent or mortgages or, uh, it, it I don't think most people are focused on local politics or state uh, politics. 
Well, and, and, and if that's true, then th they are the smartest people because at this point, I think everybody needs to take a breather after the election. But our job is to talk about politics. Um, Mark Amaday, um, very well known in Northern Nevada, um, longtime congressman, uh, proud to that state senator. Um, I would say not very well known in Southern Nevada. Won't he have an incredible amount of work to do to become familiar to the folks in Southern Nevada if he chooses to run? He's got a committee at this point. I think that he could he'd catch on down here pretty pretty quickly. Uh, as we know, Mark is a uh, he's, he's an interesting guy. People are, uh, like to follow him. He's always uh, quick with with answers and quick with uh, he's quick witted. And people enjoy Mark uh, and and listen to him. I think he, and the the knowledgeable party people on the Republican side at least uh, know him well down here. He's he doesn't come down a lot, but but a fair amount. And he's he has a following down here. I don't think there's any question about that. And you know, I think uh, hopefully we won't we won't have a major primary on our side. Uh, and I would think that that Adam, if he decides to run, uh, and, and Mark would have to come together and, and try to find some arrangements so they didn't have primary. Um, that, that would be an interesting situation to say the least. Um, there's been talk of uh, Anthony Marnell III, uh, Tony Marnell's son, um, who runs Marnell Gaming. Um, years ago, there was talk of him running for Lieutenant Governor, that didn't come to pass. Then there was the recession. Uh, he's a remarkable businessman in the fact that um, when Penn took over the M Resort, um, they kept on Marnell as president for another couple of years because he was so good at what he was doing, despite the fact that the property's value had decreased dramatically. Um, but I remember back when Phil Satry was thinking of running for governor. And the word at the time was that it would be very difficult for a gaming official um, to run for governor. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I, uh, he's, he's a talented fellow. Of course, he's in, involved in Northern Nevada now, having bought the, uh, the Sparks Nugget. Uh, so he's, he's involved in the business community now on both ends of the state in gaming. Um, it, it would be a, uh, a sort of a first. Uh, Paul Laxalt did it when he ran for the Senate and he had the Ormsby House in Carson City. But that was a much smaller scale. Um, I have not seen any moves by uh, by Tony down here, um, but it's a it's a free country. I I, uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if he got in it. You know? My my own view is that the national situation is going to continue to have a big influence on Nevada. I think that some of the moves that that uh, president president elect Biden. Uh, are now president Biden have made have been very unpopular in this state and I think that's going to resound uh, to the benefit of Republicans on an ongoing basis. All right let's take one more break and we'll be right back with former Governor List. Get in on the action at the Tamara Casino and win your share of $100,000 guaranteed now through February 27th plus five times points every Friday. $100,000 guaranteed at Tamarack Casino. Your good times are at Tamarack. Enjoy exceptional value and a comfortable atmosphere at Reno's newest steakhouse, Nevada Steak. Ooh, your good times at Tamarack. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. 
Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with former Governor Robert List. We're almost out of time. This is just zipped on by. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, you know, in, in this last election, the strength of the Republicans across the country, but particularly in Nevada, uh, was very impressive. Do you think that Nevada is still a purple state versus leaning Democrat, leaning blue? I do. I think for one, one particular reason, we have a lot of people anymore in Nevada who are independents. And they, uh, they tend to be conservatives. And when you just compare party registrations, we're a minority, but when combined with the, with the independents who are conservative, we're in play. And I think we're a purple state for a long time to come. Governor Robert List, it is such a pleasure to talk to you and see you. I wish we were in person and we'll do that again one of these days soon. Uh, but you and I have been friends for over 40 years and you're one of my favorite people. Thank you for doing this as always. Thank you, Sam. God bless you. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts. And now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian. And at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada is a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety, we all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Nevada Newsmakers and become a subscriber. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching and listening.